and I couldn't quite handle it, and neither could Annabelle. We decided we'd like the warmer climates. So we decided to head to Florida, Sumter County. However, it wasn't a real good move for us. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she had an unfortunate illness that befell her, and she died in 1887. We had had two other children by then, so we were then three, I then was a widower with three children to take care of. So, I understood that there was lumber and turpentining going on up in South Georgia. So, I took the children and we moved up and landed in Nashville. And I started a little practice here in Nashville for a couple of years and met my second wife, who was Nebraska Lastinger. And we were married in 1888. And we had our first daughter, who was Belle. I named her after my ex, my past wife. And we then decided that we needed to get to a place where there was a lot more action going on and so we went up to Scotland up in Telfair County and I practiced medicine up there for about four years. However, Nebraska, she got homesick for her parents, wanted to come back to Nashville. So we came back to Nashville in 1897, we had two more children. They were twins. And life seemed to be going pretty well for us. In 1898, they were decided they were going to take the old two-story courthouse that was the wood frame one and they were going to take it down and build a brand new brick structure. And so they took that old courthouse and they moved it across the street over and it became the new Hansel Hotel. And they built that fine edifice that you see there today. The contractor for that edifice was Henry Hugger. Now, Henry Hugger was only 26 years old, and my Mabel, my oldest daughter, she had a thing for him. <laughs> and so she would stop by and visit him whenever he, he was working with this crew building the, new, the brand new courthouse. And as soon as the courthouse was finished, their courting was finished, and they got married in 1899. Unfortunately, he was also a contractor and had to move about to make a living, and so they moved to Tennessee, unfortunately never to return again to Nashville. Just before the couple was married, we lost one of our twins. And it was real hard on Nebraska. It was real difficult for you. <laughs> so, we decided that we might move over to the new lumber area over by, right by uh, Waycross, a place called Beach. And we stayed over there a couple of years until she got over her melancholy. Well, we then moved back to Nashville and I became the county doctor. And I took care of all the prisoners, you know, the health of them. And I remember one prisoner particularly who had called on me, his name was Lem Johnson, and he had arrested a man 
and he was unauthorized to arrest the man, and he, uh, he arrested him using a concealed weapon. So he was uh, charged for carrying a concealed weapon, and they asked me to go in and, ask, and look at him and see whether or not he was uh, fit to be tried, and he was acting kind of crazy and everything, and so I went in and I told him that he was just shamming. Well, when he came to trial, he was still claiming that he was insane. His attorney said he was insane, and all of us doctors in town said he was shamming. Well, the jury thought he was shamming too, and they found him guilty of carrying that concealed weapon. No sooner had they proclaimed him guilty than he dropped his sham and started asking the audience for money so that he could pay his bond to get out. <laughs> so I was proven right. Now, I was a fun person. Now, there's no doubt about it. My family was a fun family. We participated in all the activities that went on in this community. My daughters, they were all musically inclined, and I played a pretty fair fiddle myself. And we had competitions here in town, and whenever they did, I would all offer to pay my, play my fiddle. And they also knew that if anybody here in this town didn't have too much money, they could still come to the good old Dr. Edie, and he'd still treat them. Excuse me. <laughs> well, now it's the hard part of my life, I guess. You can tell that I like to imbibe a little bit. And there was rumors going around that this particular time, the county and the city was a dry county and a dry city. And the only way you could get a little bit of liquor was if you had a doctor write the prescription. <laughs> now, there's no doubt about it. I can't say that I didn't ever write a prescription. Now, they said I wrote quite a few. <laughs> He said 2,000 was too many. <laughs> well, I don't, I, I wouldn't necessarily say I wrote that many, but I wasn't the only one. J.S. Gaskins, Dr. Gaskins, was also writing them, and he got, we both got brought up on charges. We were found guilty, each fined $700, and we were also sentenced to one year on the chain gang. <laughs> However, the county and the city were in a hard spot. They knew they needed doctors. Turpentine was going on big time here, and they needed us doctors out, particularly the ones that would almost work for nothing, which is what I did. So I was forgiven the uh, chain gang sentence if I promised not to write any more prescriptions, <laughs> which I agreed to. However, <laughs> I still found a way to procure whatever I needed without having to write in. <laughs> now, I practiced medicine here in this community for another 13 years after that incident in 1915. And they ended up I ended up getting quite ill, and I was had to give up my practice about 1928. And for about seven years, I was in a bad way. And after about uh, 77 years of life, you decide that maybe the other side isn't as bad as this side. And so I gave up my life in November of 1935. Now, Nebraska, after my passing, she went to live with our youngest daughter, Lynn, up in uh, Atlanta, and she passed away four years later. And they brought her back here and laid her here beside me. And here's where we've been, except special occasions like tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I have the opportunity to gaze out over this town the way it is today, I can still look at that old beautiful edifice over there, that 
courthouse and be so proud that my beautiful young daughter was such a catch that that contractor that built that beautiful edifice over there took him, took her as his wife. And I hope as you drive down the road in, in your fa fancy automobiles, you'll look upon that beautiful edifice there and think of good old Dr. Edie. <laughs> Thank you for coming.